If you're looking to invest in your first multimeter as a beginner and DIYer, this video is for you. If you're looking for any multimeter tutorials, I have plenty in my playlist all about multimeters that I'll have linked. This video will cover what is a multimeter, choosing the right multimeter, safety tips, multimeter usage and examples, and brand recommendations. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another adventure in the garage. This can be an overwhelming topic with lots of options. I'll be sure to walk you through everything you need to know to help you get started, so don't worry. What is a multimeter? Simply put, a multimeter is an instrument used to make precise measurements of electricity. You can think of it as a tape measure to a carpenter or a set of calipers to a machinist. The most common use of a meter is to measure voltage, AC and DC, current and resistance. There are two main categories of multimeters, that is digital and analog. This video will focus solely on digital multimeters as they have the largest selection and versatility available. Within the digital multimeter category, we also have manual and and auto selecting meters. Some may even come with an amperage clamp. We'll cover that too. Digital multimeters will also have a variety of settings that you can choose from. Most will have a setting for diodes or capacitance. Others will have the ability to test transistors. And I've even seen one that will output a square wave signal for troubleshooting. We'll also be covering costs associated with different multimeters ranging from entry level to professional grade. Choosing the right meter. Under our digital multimeter category, we have auto ranging and manual selecting and those that have an amperage clamp. Generally, multimeters that are auto ranging are going to be a little more expensive. If you're a DIYer looking for a multimeter for the occasional use for home or auto troubleshooting, a manually selecting multimeter should suit you just fine. I also have plenty of tutorials on every common meter available on the market to help guide you through the process of using one. You'll notice right away that a manually selecting meter has a lot more settings and can be intimidating to approach, whereas an auto ranging meter appears much simpler. This has to do with our value range. I wanted to take a brief moment to explain this portion in a little more detail to avoid any confusion. Let's compare the settings of two meters. On the left is a manually selecting meter and on the right is an auto ranging meter. For our voltage AC setting on the manual meter, we'll see that there are two options available. One option is indicating that it is able to read up to 200 volts AC. The second option is indicating that it is able to read up to 600 volts AC. The meter on the right simply has one AC voltage option and is capable of reading from 0 to 600 volts AC. An auto ranging meter like we see on the right is able to detect and adjust its readings automatically without you having to change any settings. This range selection will also apply to our voltage DC, resistance, and current measurements. On a manually selecting meter, you must already have an idea of the range of voltage, current, and resistance when making a measurement. This at times can be confusing for beginners because you may not necessarily know which value range to select when troubleshooting. If you're looking to spend a few extra bucks, an auto ranging multimeter can be convenient and help aid in the troubleshooting process. But ultimately, having a good understanding of electrical fundamentals will be the most beneficial. For the most part, multimeters are going to have all the same basic settings and functionality. There isn't necessarily one meter that is better for one application over another, at least while you're a beginner looking to get your foot in the door. The one that best fits your budget and has the best reviews should work for your application. But like any tool, it is an investment. Please don't buy the cheapest one you find. Purchase the best one that you can afford. You'll likely own the same one for many years and will never know just when it'll come in handy to save the day. Having a multimeter with an amp clamp can be a great accessory. If you're dealing with solar issues, battery banks, an RV, boat, trailer, things of this nature, an amp clamp is a helpful way to measure larger amounts of current safely. Just be sure to check if the amp clamp can read AC or DC depending on your usage needs. Needs. Lastly, a lesser known meter is a solenoid voltmeter, aka a wiggy tester. If you're feeling a bit overwhelmed by the options and settings, that's completely understandable. A wiggy tester is extremely easy to use and doesn't even require batteries, making this the perfect tester to keep in the truck or RV for long-term storage. This device is meant for only checking if there is power being supplied to a component, such as an outlet. They're able to reliably read between 12 to 600 volts AC and DC. 
and is the perfect tool for a novice or a beginner. Multimeter safety tips. Handling live electricity can shock, electrocute, and unalive you. So remember that when working with electricity. First tip, always keep your fingers off the metal parts of the test leads. Two, always make sure your test leads are in the proper ports. Three, if you're going to be measuring voltage 120 volts or above, wear electrically rated insulated gloves. Four, only take measurements of electrical voltage and currents that you feel comfortable with. I would recommend keeping it to 12 volt systems and under until you've gained more experience. Multimeter usage examples. Most importantly, let's cover your multimeter lead ports. Most multimeters have two or three lead ports. It's important that your leads are plugged into the proper port as to not accidentally create a short circuit. This port is COM. It stands for common. Your black lead will always be plugged into here. This port is for measuring voltage and resistance. This is where your red lead will be most of the time. This port is for measuring amperage or current. Only use this port if you're going to make a measurement in series and you understand exactly what that means. Otherwise, leave your meter in the original configuration. Practical demonstration, I'm gonna be using a manually selecting meter for most of this, just to kind of help further get you used to selecting the different ranges for reading different things. I'm gonna go ahead and check out some batteries, so I'll put it to volts DC, that's with that solid and dash line is for DC, V is for voltage, and then this 20 here is indicating up to 20 volts is what I'm gonna be reading. Put my red to positive, my black to negative, about 9.6 volts. Next here I have a larger. This is a 12 volt. You can see 13.32. And a very useful setting, every multimeter that you're going to have, if you see this speaker symbol, that's for continuity. And basically it's going to let out a tone when electrical flow can take place. And you'll hear that ringing, letting us know that there's continuity through that wire. Most meters are going to have a diode setting. This one is a part of the continuity setting. Take some measurements. We've got an LED here. Looks like that's working. We've got this diode here. Now that measurement that it's showing is the amount of voltage drop. I have a resistor here. I have no idea its value. So what I can do is I can start low. We'll start at 200 ohms and we'll just work our way clockwise until we get a reading. So I'm showing a one and in this meter that means it's out of range. This resistor, whatever its value is, is not within 200 ohms. You can go ahead and click it up to the 2000 mark. Still out of range. 20k, 200k, 20 mega ohm. So this is a one mega ohm resistor. This is 1 million ohms of resistance and that's what that means. So just to give a quick example example, the difference between our manual and our auto is if I had an auto ranging meter, I can just set it to one resistance setting and I can just take my measurement and it'll automatically say one mega ohm for me. So I don't have to go through all those clicks. Let's try an amperage measurement. See my port leads, I have my black to calm, my red to voltage and resistance, and then I've got this 10 amp max. It's gonna wanna be really careful, and I'd recommend for a beginner not even to try this, I'm just gonna demonstrate it for you, is because when your meter is in this configuration, you've essentially made a jumper cord with a 10 amp fuse built into it. And because of the nature of how the meter is set up, we're actually able to start to cause damage to things that we might actually be trying to test. We've got a little 12 volt DC incandescent bulb here. Got my port set up correctly, but now I'm with the right amperage. Now we can measure DC amperage. Some meters are not going to have an AC amperage setting, especially the lower end ones. If you're looking to measure AC amperage, be on the lookout for that. Well, I'm going to set it to the 10 amp setting as opposed to these are milliamps, 200 milliamps, 20 milliamps, and then that little funky U sign there is microamps. But what we can do here. So I can use my, my meter as a jumper cable to complete the circuit. See how there's no wire right there? And we're showing two amps of current being drawn. Now, what if I did that measurement backwards? Not a whole lot, but we're gonna get a negative sign over there. That negative sign means the polarity of our leads is opposite to what the meter is expecting the flow of electrons to be. So there's that, an AC measurement for you. Just to kind of show you what that would look like, a lot of you are probably looking to have a meter to measure AC voltage. Now, I know this doesn't look like the receptor 
receptacle in your house, we're gonna be measuring AC voltage. So like I showed earlier, we have 200 and 600. You can just put it on 200 for now. And our voltage measurements, we're gonna make in parallel. And so that means we don't need to complete the circuit. We're gonna make sure that our leads are on the right ports. Gonna keep our fingers off the metal parts. This is gonna be my hot, it's gonna be my neutral, and then this green is gonna be my ground. I always like to do black lead to ground first because you're not gonna know which one's hot and which one's neutral. If I go to the first one here, I don't show any voltage. So that tells me that this first one here is gonna be my neutral. I can go over to my hot, and now I can see my 120 volts. And then I can move my black lead over to my neutral and confirm that I have power. There you go. Brand recommendations. Naming specific brands can always be tricky since this is an ever-changing market. But currently, I would recommend Astro AI for all beginners. They have a really great selection and very reasonable prices. And no, they're not a sponsor of the channel. You're probably looking somewhere between $15 to $25. I have some linked in my Amazon store. Commercial Electric or Cobalt is another decent brand available at big box stores. You'll be generally looking between $30 to $60, maybe down to the $25 range. And and for my more advanced audience, Klein and Fluke are great options starting around $60 and going up. But please do me the biggest favor and avoid buying a multimeter from an automotive store. I have found them to be extremely overpriced and of low quality. It's worth taking a look online and reading some reviews before making your purchase decision. I'd mostly recommend Amazon for the best pricing and options. The meters I have found on Timu are of low quality. Thank you for watching another adventure in the garage. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know in the comments below. I'll check you on the next one.